In lesson 6.3, trigonometry ratios and missing sides, you're going to use the trigonometry ratios to find the side length on right triangles. So let's first start over going over what is trigonometry. Trigonometry is the study of triangle measurements. The trigonometric ratios, aka trig ratios, are just fractions formed by the lengths of the sides on a right triangle. And they fall by naming again the three sides on a right triangle. Now, the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest of the three sides, and that's always going to be on the opposite side of this 90 degree angle. So it's always going to be diagonal to the perpendicular sides of, in this case, AC and BC of these two legs there. Now, the opposite leg, it, it's going to be relevant to the side of the angle that we're interested in. Like, for example, right here, from this perspective, from this point of view down here, from angle A, which measures 32, the opposite leg of the angle 32 is this side here, this vertical side. And the adjacent leg from the angle 32 is going to be this side right here. So this leg is adjacent to 32, and this side, this leg here, is opposite to the angle 32. Of course, that would switch if I was interested in this angle right here, this upper angle of 58. From up here, this side would be the opposite side of angle 58, and this side would be the adjacent side to angle 58. So it's all relative to the angle from which we're looking at looking from I'm sorry looking from so for example naming the sides on a right triangle let's determine again the adjacent and opposite side to these triangles here from the perspective view from angle A and angle B so let's look at the one from angle A first so angle A is down here now the hypotenuse is the longest of the three sides so that's obviously going to be 13 okay that's the longest biggest number on both of the triangles 13 is bigger than all three numbers so that's obviously the hypotenuse because it's obviously going to be on the opposite of the 90 degree angle now the opposite of angle A is going to be the 12 so this is opposite of angle A and the 5 is going to be the adjacent of angle A. So from angle A, this is the opposite. Let me highlight the opposite side in blue. And the adjacent side, let me highlight it in red, is going to be that one right there. So opposite, the adjacent is in red, opposite is in blue. Now, if we do this from the perspective of angle B from up here, the opposite of angle A is going to be this side here. Again, it goes across. This is the opposite side. And the adjacent side of angle B is going to be this one right here. So it's all relative from the point of view that we're looking at. This. So like I was saying, the opposite side the opposite side of angle B is the 5, and the adjacent side of angle B is going to be the 12 this time. So again, it's all from the point of view of the angle that we're looking at. So from a different angle, the opposite will be different from a, the other uh, adjacent angle, the other acute angle. So let's look at some more examples of this in a second, okay? Now this is going to be very important. You need to be able to distinguish the difference between the opposite and the adjacent side from the from the different perspectives. Because one is going to be again the other. So let's look at how we use this. Now the reason that this is so important because the three trig functions or the three trig ratios that we're going to be using are which are called sine, cosine, and tangent use those three sides, use two of those three sides from a uh, particular angle, from a perspective angle. So the sine is the ratio of the opposite leg and the hypotenuse, meaning that I can take the sine of an angle by getting the opposite and dividing it by its hypotenuse. Now these 
things right here these three things right here which is how this is how you spell the whole word are w these are just abbreviations of these three words right there are tr are called trigonometric uh, functions so they are an operation that's performed again in trigonometry it's like taking this not probably the best way of explaining it but it's like similar to like taking the square root it does a particular action to the ratio of this value there to get again a specific value so if we get the sine of an angle it's going to equal again to this ratio so if i get the sine of whatever the angle is it's going to equal to that ratio dividing the opposite and the hypotenuse so uh for cosine it's the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse and the tangent is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Now a way of memorizing this again is by using this abbreviation, this acronym, which is pronounced so ka toa. So so ka toa. Which the S stands for sine, the O and the H stands for opposite and hypotenuse, C stands for cosine. A and H is adjacent and hypotenuse, and T stands for tangent, which is the opposite and the adjacent. So let's see how these ratios work. So for example, using the trigonometry, trigonometry to find the side lengths on a right triangle. So let's say I want to find the sine, cosine, and tangent, sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A. So first, identifying where angle A is, I want to identify the three sides on my triangle. Well, the longest side, which again is the 13, is going to be the hypotenuse. Now, the 5 and the 12, again, can be opposite depending if I'm looking from angle A or angle C. Well, from angle A, the 5 is going to be the opposite side. Okay, so from this point on, it doesn't matter which one is shorter, which one's uh, smaller, all right? So it's just looking from the angle of 5. So 5 is the opposite, which means that 12 is going to be the adjacent side. So from our acronym of so ka toa, I can figure out what the sine of angle A is going to equal to because it's going to equal to the ratio of getting the opposite O, the opposite side, and dividing it by H, the hypotenuse. So the opposite side of 5 dividing it by the hypotenuse of 13. So there's your answer. So the sine of this angle A is equal to 5 over 13. Cosine is going to equal to the adjacent side A divided by H, the hypotenuse. So your adjacent side is 12 divided by 13. And tangent T divides the O and H, which is the opposite and the adjacent. So the opposite side is 5 and the adjacent side is 12. So this is your trig ratios and the, the, trig, um, the trig ratios of angle A, of that angle A. Let's say we flip it around and want to figure out the trig ratios from angle C. So the hypotenuse is still going to be 13 because that's opposite of the 90 degree and it's the longest of the three sides. The hypotenuse is always going to be the longest of the three sides. However, since we're now going to look at the other two sides from this angle down here, the opposite is now going to be the 12 and the adjacent is now going to be the 5. So it's not that the opposite is always going to be the smaller of the two sides and the same thing with the adjacent okay those are going to switch depending again from the angle that we're looking at and to identify the sine cosine and tangent of this angle c again we use these trig ratios so 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 which is sine opposite hypotenuse soh sine opposite hypotenuse it's, tell us that it's going to tell us that the sine of this angle is going to equal to dividing the opposite and the hypotenuse. So O over H. So 12 over 13. Cosine divides the A over H. Adjacent 
over hypotenuse. And TOA, T for tangent, divides the O over A, the opposite, 12 over the adjacent, 5. So those are going to be the trig ratios for angle C. Using this idea, using this idea, knowing how to create these trig ratios is how we're going to figure out the side lengths on the right triangle. So for example, oh, I'm sorry, let's do one more example of this before we actually go into that. So here, another example, we want to figure out the sine of this angle 38. So angle 38 is down here. So that makes the 50 because it's the longest of the three sides, the hypotenuse. 50 is bigger than the 39 and 31, so that's automatically the hypotenuse, which is obviously on the opposite side of the 90. Now, because we're looking right now from this angle down here, that's going to make the 31 the opposite and 39 the adjacent side. So using our little mnemonic device, SOGATOA, we can figure out the trig ratios, the three trig ratios, by dividing first the opposite and the hypotenuse, which is 31 over 50, dividing the adjacent over the hypotenuse, 39 over 50, and the opposite, 31 over the adjacent, 39. Now, we would have to simplify this if they had a common factor. 31 over 50 doesn't have a common factor. N uh, neither does 39 and 50, nor does 31 and 39. So there's no common factor, so we can reduce that fraction. Now, to figure out the sine of this angle 52, from this perspective, from 52, now it becomes the opposite. Things are going to switch. The hypotenuse is still going to be the same, all right? So this, the 50 is still going to be the hypotenuse. However, from this perspective up here, this is now going to be the opposite side because that's across from it, which means that the 31 is now going to be the adjacent side. So the sine of 52 divides the opposite and hypotenuse, so that's going to be 39 over 50. The cosine of 52 divides the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so that's 31 over 50. And the tangent divides the opposite over the adjacent, which is now 39 over 31. So things got a little switch there. Notice that they're not the same numbers because we're looking at this at from a different angle. Now, like I said, we use this ratio, we use this right here, and the ability to create these ratios to solve and figure out the missing links on triangles. So, for example, let's say, again, I have this right triangle here, and I want to figure out the value of W, all right? Well, I need to use, again, because I have an angle and a side, the way to figure this out, again, is by using so katoa, the trig ratios. Now, not all three of them are going to be helpful because the three, again, use only two of the three sides. And here, I'm only given one angle and one of the three sides, and I'm looking for one of the others. So the way to determine which of these three ratios I use, I have to first determine what I'm looking for and what side is provided for me to determine which of these three are going to be the most useful and only one of them will. So here, opposite of the, I start by first identifying the hypotenuse, which is going to be the 28, since it's on the opposite of the 90 degree angle. Now, since the 40 angle is down here, opposite of that is my opposite side, which means that this is going to be my adjacent side. Now, notice that I'm interested in figuring out the opposite side, and I'm provided the hypotenuse. So I need to use the one that uses the opposite and hypotenuse, so O and H. Well, the only one that uses O and H is this first one right here. Notice that the adjacent side is not helpful because I don't, one, I'm not looking for the length of the adjacent side and I'm not provided the 
I'm not provided how actually how long it actually is. So the adjacent side is not going to be helpful. And since both of these use the adjacent side, cosine and tangent are not going to help me figure this out. So I'm going to use first I have to determine that I have to use this one in order to figure out this link there. So S, which stands for sine of this angle 40, is going to equal to the opposite side which is W divided by the hypotenuse which is 28. So using that trig ratio I can now set up an equation that I can solve by simply cross multiplying. And in this situation a multiply 28 and the sine of 40 looks like this. So this is your value. So 28 times the sine of 40 is going to be your answer. Now we can then use again our calculator, whether it's the Inspire, our TI, or our Desmos calculator to actually write this into that value there. And we can figure out the approximated value of this. So let's do that. Let me get my Desmos calculator out. Let me find it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I just had it here. Oops, wrong one. Not this one. There we go. That one right there. So we're doing again 28 times the sine of 40. So 28 times here sine of 40. I need to make sure again that I have the degrees, not the radians, the degrees labeled automatically defaulted to that. And my answer is going to be 17.9. So this approximates to 17.9 and a 9, which again approximates even better to just the whole number 18 because of the two 9s. So let's see, let's do another example of this. So for this example, again, before we decide on which one of these three trig ratios to use, so, ka, or toa, I have to see which side I'm looking for and what side is given to me. So start by first I looking at finding the 90 degree angle and finding the opposite side of that. That's going to be your hypotenuse. Then start at the angle that they give you, which is 20, and draw an arrow to the opposite of that. So that's going to be your opposite side, which means that the third side is your adjacent side. So here, just like last time, the adjacent side is the one where uh, doesn't give me any information. I uh, first of all, I'm not interested in figuring out the length of the adjacent side, nor do I know the actual length of it. So anything that uses the adjacent side, a is going to be useless. So this one and this one is going to be useless. And the one I'm going to use is going to be the trig ratio that uses the opposite and the hypotenuse. So O and H. And again, that's cosine. I'm sorry, that's sine. That's S. So S, which is the sine of this 20 degree angle, is going to equal to the opposite side of 14 divided by the hypotenuse of X. So here, cross multiplying, we're going to end up with x times the sine of 20 is equal to 14. And because I'm looking for x, I'm going to divide by the sine of 20. So what happens in this situation when my x is in the denominator right here, I'm simply just switching these two ultimately. So I switch the x with the sine of 20 and the sine of 20 with x. So I end up dividing 14 with the sine of 20. So when this happens, you end up dividing when the x is in the denominator. If the x is in the numerator, you end up multiplying the number down here with this one, just like we did on this example. Notice that we multiply the 28 with the sine of 40. We're now going to divide the 14 with the sine of 20. We can then plug this into the calculator. So let me bring up my Desmos. And 14 divided by the sine of 20 is approximately 40.93, so 40.9. 
So x is equal to 40.9. Now, in the first couple, uh, on the first, on the front side of the assignment, you're gonna write your answers like this. Okay, so you're not gonna approximate. On the back side of the assignment, which are the last four problems, you are gonna estimate your answer again to the nearest tenth, as indicated. So right here, this is how I want you to write the answer for the first and second example like this. I just wanted to show you how to use the calculator to approximate the value. Okay, so let's see, let's do another example of this. Let's find the value of x on number six. So again, you from the trig ratios of so ka toa to decide which of those three we use, Let's look at the information they give us. So let's start by first finding the opposite side of the 90 degree, which is this one, this is your hypotenuse. And since the angle that we're interested in is that one up there, drawing an arrow across is gonna give our opposite, and then we have the adjacent. So here, we have to use, the, we're looking for the opposite, and they give us the adjacent side. So the hypotenuse is going to be useless. So anything that uses the hypotenuse is not going to be helpful, which is the sine and the cosine. They both use hypotenuse. So here we're going to have to use the third one, TOA, which the T stands for the tangent. So the tangent of our angle, 53, is going to equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So O divided by A. So X divided by 4. So cross multiplying, that's going to multiply 4 times the tangent of 53. So that's what the value of x is. So there's your answer. So moving on to the next example. To find the value for this example right here, again, starting off by first writing our trig ratios. Let's identify the op the hypotenuse first, which is that's going to be 28. Here is our angle down here. So drawing an arrow across from it is going to be our opposite side. And that makes this bottom side here our adjacent. So we're looking for the adjacent side using the hypotenuse. So A and H is what we're looking for, which is going to be the middle one. And as you can clearly see, they don't tell us anything about the opposite side. And since we're not looking for it, we don't care about finding the opposite or using the opposite. So anything that uses an O is going to be out. So our ratio here is that C, the cosine of our angle of 60 degrees is going to equal to the adjacent side of X divided by the hypotenuse. Cross multiplying, we're going to get that the value of X is going to equal to 28 times the cosine of 60 degrees. So there's your value of x. Now for number eight and number nine, we we're gonna estimate the value, we're gonna find the values of x and y, and we're gonna estimate our answers to the nearest tenth. So here we're gonna actually plug it into the calculator. So, so, ka, toa, all right? So let's see which we're gonna use. Here we're gonna have to use two to find, figure out x and then we'll figure out y. So let's label the three sides. So first, let's label the hypotenuse. So here's my 90 degree angle. So that makes the 14 the hypotenuse. The angle is 22. So that makes x the opposite side and that makes y the adjacent side. So let's first figure out the value of x. Well, to figure out the value of x, we're gonna figure out the, we're looking for the opposite side, and we're gonna use the 14, which is the hypotenuse. So the one that uses O and H is so. So the S stands for sine of 22 degrees is equal to the opposite side of x divided by the hypotenuse, which is 14. So cross multiplying, x is equal to 14 times the sine of 22 degrees. And let's approximate that with our calculator. So 14 
times the sine of 22 degrees is equal to 5.2. So 5.2 is the answer. To figure out the value of y, we're looking for the adjacent side, and again, we're using the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side and hypotenuse, that requires the use of this one right here in the middle, co. co. So C stands for cosine, 22 degrees is equal to A, the adjacent side of Y, divided by H, the hypotenuse of 14. So again, cross multiplying, Y is gonna equal to 14 times the cosine of 22 degrees. Let's plug that into the calculator and see what that equals to. So 14 times the cosine of 22 degrees. That's 12.98. And since we want to estimate to this decimal point value there, that's going to estimate to a 10. So we end up with 13.0. So those are the two values for X and Y respectively. Let's see, let's do one more last example of this again. Again, where we're looking for both the values of x and y, and we want to estimate our answer like last time to the nearest tenth. So, let me just write Sokotoa again. And let's see what we're going to use. So we're looking for both x and y. Across, here's my 90 degree angle, so start with that first. So we can identify the hypotenuse. Now, since our angle is uh, 35 here, drawing an arrow across from that is going to be the opposite side, and that means that x is going to be the adjacent side. So let's start by first figuring out the value of x. So x, which is the adjacent side, and we're given the 30, which is the hypotenuse, we're going to have to use a and h. So that's the middle one, k. So c, which stands for cosine of this angle of 35 degrees, is going to equal to x over 30. So that means we're going to cross multiply. So 30 gets multiplied with the cosine of 35. And using, again, our calculator, 30 times the cosine of 35 degrees is equal to 24.57, so 24.6. Now, to figure out the value of y. Well, to figure out the value of y, we're looking we're going looking for the opposite side and again we have to use the 30 which is the hypotenuse so the side the trig identity or the trig ratio that uses opposite and hypotenuse is sine so the first one so s which is the sine of this 35 degree angle is equal to the opposite side divided by 30 so cross multiplying that's going to multiply 30 with the sine of 35 degrees And let's approximate that value with our calculator. So 30 times the sine of 35. That estimates to 17.20. So 17.2. And there, there is your two ratio, two, the two values of x and y. X is equal to 24.6 and y is equal to 17.2. And there you have it. Right. Well, that concludes, again, the examples for this lesson. If you do have any questions, um, please send me a message on Remind or email. Again, I appreciate you watching, and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.